Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, uh, when, when Kelly told me uh, a couple of weeks ago that Senator Davis was going to be the keynote speaker today, I was thankful I was assigned to speak before the senator. First, no one wants to ever follow one of Texas' best orators. Uh, and second, I wasn't sure I could wait 13 hours for my turn to speak. <laughs> uh, uh, Dale gave me some very good advice right before I came up here to make sure to thank my wife first. Uh, 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 so I appreciate the advice. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, uh, Kate Gannon, who's with us here today. Uh, uh, this work would not have been possible without her tolerating me staying uh, at school board meetings until midnight and piling up our uh, dining room table with thousands of pages of documents over and over again. Uh, Zaire and I are so humbled to receive this award. The Freedom of Information Foundation of Texas has such a tremendous history of working to improve transparency in Texas government. And the list of this previous winner of the previous winners of the James Madison Award, uh, many of whom are, are here today, uh, truly inspires awe. Uh, and I also want to begin by thanking my uh, my friend and, and competitor uh, Brenda Deanda Swan from KBIA TV in El Paso, who's a member of the FOIFT board, uh, for nominating us for this award. I'm so proud to share this award with Zaire Torres, one of the most dedicated reporters I've worked with in my 30 years in journalism. Earlier this year, her great work was recognized with a new job at the Denver Post. Uh, that's one of the downsides of doing great work uh, with somebody is you tend to lose them pretty quickly. Uh, uh, and I'm sorry she couldn't be here today because of a, a previous commitment. The El Paso Times investigation of cheating at the El Paso Independent School District reinforced two things for me that I'd like to share with you today. The first is how critical open government laws are in informing the public. Like most watchdog reporting, our investigation of cheating at the El Paso Independent School District would not have been possible without access to documents. When we first asked for a variety of records from the school district, we were told that it would take weeks to compile them at a cost of tens of thousands of dollars. That was a prohibitive expense, obviously. Then we learned that many of the records we sought had actually already been compiled for a U.S. Department of Education audit, so Zaira had the bright idea to ask the district to provide us what they gave to the federal auditors. So all of a sudden, those same records that were going to cost us tens of thousands of dollars in the school district's eyes suddenly became audit working papers. So the school district asked the attorney general for permission to withhold the records on the grounds that they were audit working papers, an exception spelled out in section 552.116 of the Public Information Act. I've gotten to know that section very well. Um, the request wound up in the hands of Assistant Attorney General Cynthia Nettles. In a ruling on Valentine's Day 2012, Ms. Nettles noted that the audit working papers exception applied only to audits by specific state and local agencies. The U.S. Department of Education, Ms. Nettles noted, was not among them. She then wrote, quote, thus, section 552.116 is not applicable, and the district may not withhold any of the submitted information under section 552.116 of the government code. That's become one of my favorite sentences of all time. <laughs> That sentence would help send a corrupt superintendent to prison. That sentence would lead to the firings or forced resignations of numerous school administrators, including two superintendents. That sentence would eventually lead to an unprecedented decision by the state of Texas to remove the elected board of a large urban school district. I think it's appropriate today to thank Assistant Attorney General Cynthia Nettles for a decision that liberated thousands of pages of records that the El Paso Independent School District and the U.S. Department of Education wanted to keep secret. The El Paso Independent School District saga also is a reminder of the critical function that newspapers and other media in Texas must play in our communities. By April of 2012, a painful series of facts were evident to Zaire and me. The El Paso Independent School District had failed in its obligations to hundreds or perhaps thousands of its most vulnerable students. The Texas Education Agency then failed those students with half-hearted audits in 2010 that cleared the district of wrongdoing. The U.S. Department of Education was coming perilously close to a similar failure in its follow-up investigation. In short, with the exception of the FBI, Every significant institution that was supposed to be protecting these kids failed them. We damn sure weren't going to let the El Paso Times be added to that list of institutions that failed our children. I made a decision that I'd never made before as an editor. 
I took one of my best reporters and told her she was doing one story for the foreseeable future and didn't have to worry about doing anything else. Her job was to tell El Paso and the world what happened to these immigrant kids who had become an inconvenience for so-called educators who were more interested in cash bonuses than in educating children. I also carved out a significant portion of my own time to work with her, and this lasted for more than a year. Day by day, week after week, month after month, Zaira told that story in our news pages. In the editorial pages, the Times laid out a reform plan that eventually became a roadmap for other community leaders and for a new Texas education commissioner who had no ties to the past failures. Much work remains to be done, but the Times investigation and the community's response has made reform possible. I'd like to conclude by sharing a story that shows what drives journalists like Zaire and me to do what we do. Earlier this year, I spoke to teachers in a graduate education class at the University of Texas at El Paso. We were discussing the Times coverage of the El Paso School District, including the cheating scandal and a toxic administrative culture that had long permeated the district. A bilingual education teacher thanked me for the Times coverage and said, you have alleviated so much pressure from me. I can breathe again. They're letting me teach because they know you're watching. Thank you again, Freedom of Information Foundation of Texas, for honoring this work.